Hi guys here from Linz and I'm not happy about some things which I have to share now with you my friends and this is about the status of Schengen today because in this um, period of right-wing populism in the last decade in the last decade where Putin and uh, Orban and Trump uh, and Dodik, Vucic and all these people have dominated European politics and all their populism and their right-wing allies this was very very problematic and they have started all this kind of hatred of Schengen and unfortunately also in Austria a very negative attitude towards migration, uh, new people and also against Schengen has developed. And what is the answer? It's always the same. Yeah? Close the borders, put the military or the police at the border. And we have of course uh, the result of our very bad foreign policy. The crisis of 2015, I remind you is just a result of our disastrous non-intervention into Syria. It is a result of uh, Putin's disastrous war in Syria and of our inability to come to terms with Turkey. Our three big failures of the last decade with Turkey that we lost it or whatever we have somehow uh, destabilized the country unfortunately with Putin uh, this kind of non-confrontation leaving him since 2013 the world uh, area to uh, wreak havoc everywhere and then of course in Syria the non-intervention and then came the big refugee crisis and we have managed that one as well extremely badly we have been luckily somehow man it was as if we would have a better foreign policy we wouldn't have had the crisis from the beginning I repeat Anyhow, so what is then the answer of our failed uh, political elite? It is then to put the police at the German-Austrian border <laughs> or at the Austrian-Hungarian border or at the Macedonian Greek border. <laughs> and this is of course all kind of just putting the problem to the next neighbor <laughs> and this is not a European-wide settlement for any of the problems and as I say all the time our problem is our foreign policy because we have to contain Putin and we have to make sure there is no people like Assad in power and I have made it also on many occasions already very clear that countries which are failed cannot be kept together no Libya no Syria no Iraq and no Afghanistan there must be smaller and better countries recognized instead of that. Yes, absolutely. Then there must be nation built and uh, developed and secured. And then the people will also not go in big amounts uh, towards the European Union safety because that's not so nice to do actually, to risk your life over 3000 kilometers under very difficult circumstances. And many of them die in the process. They would certainly prefer to live in security back at home than such a terrible fate. I'm very much for openness, to must make it very clear, but not everybody can come obviously to Austria or to Europe, but we can be first of all more open and we can make sure that we have a common system for asylum migration based on financial benefits, not on force, and that we really are open and work much better together as a united Europe. And here I come to my most important point because it means utterly a waste of money to repatriate Europeans around Europe. I'm so angry <laughs> every time I see and read that somebody from the Western Balkans or from Ukraine or from Georgia or Moldova from the nine countries is then forcefully or and either forcefully or also uh, then in airplane set or with police force they take them in the morning like the two Georgian girls and many people from Kosovo and then they say oh wonderful in Albania they really they, they contribute so good to all the system it works like this the police has then to execute the, uh, the people bring them into the into not shoot them but uh, they execute the orders and bring the people then to the airport and they fly back then they come back in the bus yeah and it costs a lot of money in administration for the taxpayers while we here actually everywhere could really need the people and they want to work <laughs> I mean this is the most silly system I ever saw 
and I fight it. I hate it. So no, okay, let's open the labor market for all Europeans and no repatriations for anybody who is not a criminal. If it's a criminal, of course, then we have to see, should they sit better in the jail in whatever, Kosovo or in Austria, that's another issue, but that's a very tiny segment. Most people want to come here to work and let peace at everybody from Kosovo, from Ukraine, from Georgia, let them work here, first of all. And that's already a lot of people and that's a very significant contribution to having less problems and more prosperity and faster growth in Europe. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we need to reinvigorate Schengen. No, there is no need for German-Austrian border controls. <laughs> I mean, that's what we built Europe for, not to have them. Not German-Austrian, no Austrian-Italian, no Austrian-Hungarian border controls. It's completely crazy to have border controls between Austria and Hungary. And now the worst thing, yeah, to have the military <laughs> at the Austrian-Slovenian-Austrian-Hungarian border. This is crazy. <laughs> the poor guys train them to fight in uh, Ukraine against our enemy, against Russia. And let's not have the time wasted at the border because that's really very outrageous. And you see how our politics again is doing everything completely wrong. They buy from the enemy here. <laughs> and I'm in Upper Austria now for the evening. And I'm, they are buying from Russia instead of cutting Russia off and they are blocking the labor market. In one place you can see what is wrong because corporatistic socialist and Christian Democrat corporatistic Austria, they want cheap energy and less workers. <laughs> While <laughs> the other thing should be much better, less carbon energy, less Russian dependency and more Europeans on our labor market. We would be much richer, <laughs> but we do everything wrong because of the wrong ideology of protectionism, anti-Semitism, anti-capitalism and our other big original sins. The kind of we together against the rest. <laughs> and that's of course a complete disaster. Yes, so Schengen, we should not have the military at the borders. <laughs> we should not have the police at the borders. We are inside the European Union and they should be open. <laughs> use the police against criminals and not against travelers <laughs> and tourists yeah? because the effects of these borders is just annoying <laughs> and doesn't really help a lot yeah? at all actually and the costs are huge and it's a kind of populistic showcase um, politics and just uh, to we have the police and the military at the border <laughs> and these poor 19 year old girl, um, girl boys and girls at our border what they can really do. Yes, so that's number one. Number two actually. Oh, there's the Austrian trade union. Another of this blocking people. Block the people, block the people, block the people. High inflation, very good. Higher wages, very good, yeah. But no foreigners, yeah. And then they say, ah, oh, but we are against foreigners, yeah. No, let them come here to work. <laughs> ah. Anyhow, it's so anti-European. My whole Austria is built on anti-Europeanism. It's a very big disgrace. So, we come to the next point, yeah, Schengen, of course. What is also very important is that uh, Kosovo has the visa liberalization. Huh? And of course, Azerbaijan as well. And of course, Armenia as well, yes. And that's very, very good, yeah. You know, but first of all, Kosovo as Western Balkan countries is a big shame. And of course, with Azerbaijan, we have now energy agreements, so let's have them visa as well. And Armenia would be also to somehow soften them up for a turn to the West, which hopefully will come as well. So that's really very important. Yeah? And that's also for visa free. And then we have obviously the big Schengen topics, because Croatia got now, I think, the Schengen OK. But Bulgaria, Romania are still discriminated <laughs> against. And I think Cyprus as well, but that's more complicated with the division. But I'm obviously for full membership of all the European Union countries, if they want. <laughs> I mean, it's outrageous that they are not. It's outrageous. I'm making this video not in 1950 <laughs> or in 1985. <laughs> it's 2022. 
Romania, Bulgaria since 2007 in the EU. And then they have, of course, fulfilled all the criteria, but some kind of extreme populist and poor leadership and some kind of French internal issues or Dutch internal issues, which are hurting us so much. And they have, of course, kept us back. And that's very disgraceful. This must stop. So they must also join. So I'm very clear, Kosovo, visa liberalization, most important priority. But Azerbaijan would be very good. Armenia, I think I'm in favor as well. And that is the countries. The rest, of course, the Belarusians, of course, only the opposition people. But make it easy for them to come if they want to leave. <laughs> I have made that case already because we should also be in full solidarity with free European Belarus because it will be one day in NATO and in the EU and we should prepare that and support them and I have made the case very often already for a recognized exile government and to have this opportunity for all people to leave Belarus because it's a dictatorship from a crazy dictator so I have to cross the street in my hometown. Here I was born. Beautiful Linz. And then of course Schengen completion is very good. And also the Schengen is again fully opened to uh, all the Europeans and that we stop to waste our governmental taxpayers' resources on the border controls because that is completely unnecessary and doesn't really bring any effect and we should be very clear on that one. So that is the case and to open the labor market and that's the spirit of Schengen. On the 6th of August, I think, is the day and we will have to discuss how to do that. But I call everybody on the 6th or 7th of August 2022 to make a campaign for Schengen freedom and to make that very clear and to call for the spirit of St. Germanshof Bobendorf of the day when in the 6th of uh, August 1950 they were burning the border positions in order to protest for a free United Europe. And today there is a generation in power, luckily no longer in some ways, but the spirit of that Europe united must be strong again. That's the spirit of Schengen, that's the spirit of Europe and that's what we need and we need that fast and fully and intensively and that's what I'm calling for. Thanks a lot for that and more to come from Pax Arubiana. Bye!